So if you're watching this video, that means you are ready to start a pocket weaving. Congratulations. So I'm just going to show you um, the steps to get one started. And then once you've started one, you'll be able to just weave and weave and weave and weave and weave until your weaving is all the way up to here. And then you'll take it off. So when you're at that point, you'll have to watch the next video. But I'm going to show you how to get started so that you can get going like this, just like this one. It's about this far done. So I have my supplies right here. I've got my cardboard that I'm ready to start with, some scissors, some big ones that can cut cardboard. Um, I'm going to use a Sharpie pen so you can kind of see what I draw on my cardboard better, but you actually don't need a Sharpie pen. You just need like a pencil. Um, and then I've got one of these little measuring tools that I will have out for you guys in the classroom. Um, and it's just marked off at half inch increments if you're trying to do this at home. And then I have two different colors of markers. And um, the different colors of markers aren't colors that are going to actually show up in your weaving. It's just so that I can color one of my, one side of my cardboard one color, the other side different color. So as I'm doing this, I can say, okay, let's turn to the red side. Now let's turn back to the blue side. Um, for those of you who are working along with me. So really these two colors don't matter what colors they are. I just grab these two out of the box. So that's, um, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, um, all my supplies, which I have, and I'm going to get started. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your little measuring tool and you're going to put it at the top of your weaving so that the edge lines up with the edge of your cardboard. You're just going to hold it still and take your pencil and trace it so you have a line a half inch from the top. You can't see that right there. And you're going to put that at the bottom too. You're going to hold it still again and trace it along the bottom. So your cardboard should look like this. And that's just a guide to keep you from cutting your notches too far into your cardboard. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take um, this little measuring device and you're gonna lay it next to your line. And what you're gonna do is anywhere that you see a line on the measuring device, you're gonna draw one from this line you just drew straight up to the top of your cardboard. So this little measuring tool has um, nine lines on it. So I'm going to put nine lines on my cardboard. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now this little area looks just like this thing. And I'm going to do it on this side too, on the bottom of my weaving. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And they don't have to be perfectly straight lines. These are just the lines that you're going to cut for your notches. All right. So I'm going to do that next. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my scissors. I'm going to cut each notch. So I'm just going to cut along those little short lines that I drew, but I'm going to stop my cut when it gets to that long line, okay? So I'm going to cut out all nine of my notches. I find that when I'm cutting cardboard, which is a lot harder than cutting paper, it's easiest to cut with the back of your scissors. That's this part right here. If you try to cut with the tip, it's a lot harder especially if you're cutting something thick like cardboard to cut like this, um, you can't get as accurate of a cut or you just don't have as much control. Um, and it takes a lot more force. So you want to use this part closest to the joint of your scissors. I'm going to cut all of my notches. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some arrows pointing to the top of my weaving. I'm going to turn my weaving like a book. So I'm going to put them on both sides. 
so that I can remember which is the top. I don't ever want the arrows to be going down while I'm setting up my weaving. I always want them to be pointing up, which means when you flip your cardboard back and forth, you're not going to flip it up and down. You're going to flip it like this. Does that make sense? That's upside down. There we go. Okay, are you guys ready? Um, so before we add string, I am going to go ahead and color this side blue. I'm just going to kind of scribble some blue on there. And I'm going to color this side red. And that's just because both sides of this cardboard look exactly the same. So this way you can kind of tell them apart. So if you want to do that too, if you want to color one side red and one side blue, then you can work with me um, through this video and we can be on the same side at the same time. That's the only reason I did that. Um, you don't have to do that to make your weaving work. Your weaving will be just fine without this coloring. Um, but that's just what I do to help kids kind of keep up. So now you're going to need string, not thread, not yarn, but just regular string. Um, so I just grabbed some white string. The color doesn't actually matter because if you look at this weaving that's started to uh, get going, I used blue string, but in the part that's actually woven, you can't see this string running through it. So the string color really doesn't matter. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my string, I'm going to start at the top on the left side. And I'm just going to put my string into, whoa, into that first notch like that. So on the blue side, I have my string coming out attached to my roll. On the red side, I have my string coming out of the top and it's just a little loose end. Now you're not going to do anything with this end. You're going to leave this end completely alone. Do not touch it until you get to the very end of your weaving. So you can see on this weaving that I've started, it has one of those two, one of those little loose ends right there. I'm just going to leave it alone for now. Okay, so right now we're on the blue side. And the reason we're on the blue side is because that's the side with the string that's attached to the roll. We're always going to focus on whatever side you have your string coming out of. So right now I'm at the top left notch. I'm going to take my string and put it down at the bottom notch and put it into that little cut, into that notch. Then I'm going to flip over which means my string moves to this side. Now my string's now on the right side. I'm gonna take this string, I'm gonna do some more. I'm gonna take it from the bottom and I'm gonna bring it up. I'm actually gonna put it into the same notch as the string that's already coming out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it into there. Does that make sense? So on the red side, you have one notch that's string coming out of it that's loose and then a line of string going from the bottom to the top. I'm gonna to flip to the blue, which is where I have my string. What I'm now going to do is something called a loop. And a loop means instead of going up or down with your string, you're going to go across. You're going to go to the left or the right. I'm just going to take my string from this first notch. I'm going to loop it over to the next notch. So that just makes a little loose loop going from one to the other. And then I'm going to take this string and I'm going to pull it so I don't have it so that the loop's not loose anymore. It's tight up against the cardboard. So this is what your blue side should look like. I'm going to flip to my red. I'm going to take this string and I'm going to go down to the second notch, to the notch that doesn't have anything in it yet. Okay, so anytime you're on the bottom of your weaving, you're going to go up. So right now my string's coming out of the bottom, so I'm going to go up. And I'm going to go up to that second notch where the loop is. I'm going to put my string in. Now anytime you're at the top, you're going to loop over. So now I'm on the red side. I'm going to loop from the second notch to the third notch. So now on my red side, I should have two vertical lines, two lines going up and down, and then one loop. On my blue side, I should also have two vertical lines and a loop in between them. And I'm going to take my string, and I'm going to go down to the third notch. Flip to red, go up that notch that just has the loop in it. All right, I'm going to start to go a little bit faster now because you know all the steps. You're just going to keep on repeating. So I'm going to turn to blue, take my string, and loop over. Go to red, take my string, go down to a new notch. Flip. 
And at the bottom, on blue, go up. On red, loop over. Blue, go down. Red, go up. Blue, loop over, red, go down. You get the pattern. Anytime you go around the bottom, you go back up. Anytime you're at the top, you loop around before you go down. I'm at the bottom on the blue side. I'm going to go up to my notch. I'm on the red side. I'm going to loop over. So I just made that loop. Blue side, go down. Red side, go up. Blue side, loop over. And you always loop over to a notch that doesn't already have a loop. So I would never connect two loops. Red side, Go down, blue side, go, oops, go up, red side, loop over, blue side, go down. Now my blue side is finished. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines going up and down and they're pretty tight they're not super loose i've also got four loops going across the top my last string doesn't connect to a loop which is fine my red side looks like it's not done most of you would want to take this string and go up to that last notch one more time but you don't want to do that because i said on this side i have nine strings if i went up right here then I would have nine strings on this side too. And nine plus nine is, <coughs> is 18. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> nine plus nine is 18. We don't want an even number of these strings. We want an odd number. Blue side has nine, which means red side should only have eight. So do not take this string and go up to that last notch. Leave it just like this. Red side has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight straight up and down lines and one, two, three, four loops. Now I'm ready to cut this string off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo about two or three feet. And then I'm going to cut it off. You're all done with this string. You can put that string away. So now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to start weaving. Are you ready to start weaving? Oh, my arrows. Oh, my arrows are right. Okay, so to weave now, we're going to start at the bottom, and we're going to weave across the bottom, and we're going to slowly fill up your cardboard with yarn, just like this one. So this is the bottom, and it's slowly filling up with this yarn. But before we're ready to add yarn, you've got to start with the string. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this loose end to my string. I'm just going to start weaving right here. So what that means is I am going to go and take my string and go under this first long string over the second string, under the third, over the fourth, which means I just go on top of it or I skip it, under the fifth, over the sixth, under the seventh, and over the last. So my string is kind of like a snake. It's going under one, then it's going over one, then under, then over. Um, so if I pick up my string, you can see that it holds up half of these strings. Can you see the ones that are sticking up? Okay, so it's under this one, skip, this one, skip, this one, skip, and this one. It's under half of them, that's very important. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this loose string 
and I'm going to pull it all, careful not to get it knotted, all the way through. Okay? I'm going to push it down to the bottom. All right? So my string's on this side. It's over here now. Now you need to remember, the last thing I did was I ended going over. I went over this one. So I'm going to turn my weaving like a book, which puts my string coming out back on the left. I'm going to weave this way again. Now, it's very important that if you ended going over, then when you flip, you begin going under. If you ended on this side going under, then you begin going over. It's always the opposite. So I ended on this side over my last string, which means I'm going to start by going under. I'm going to go, oops, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. So my last one I went under. Now I'm going to pull the rest of my string through, just like that. I'm going to slide this down to the bottom. And your string should be wrapping around from the back. It should be going around that edge. Okay, so I said I ended going under. So when I flip it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over. Okay, so just because last time you started going under doesn't mean the next time you're going to start going under. I'm going to start going over. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under. And you're going to keep doing this pattern around your weaving. And you're going to keep sliding that string down to the bottom so that those sit next to each other. Let's see, I ended going under. So I'm going to begin going over, under, over, under. And you're going to keep doing this till you've used up this string that I have attached. So that's probably going to take like three times around, okay? And what you'll notice is each time you go around, you're doing the opposite of the time before. So what that means is I just went under, over, under, over, but the string before that went over, under, over, under. So it switches each time. That's what creates the lock kind of um, knots or pattern in your weaving that holds it all together when we take it off of the cardboard. That's what holds it together and turns it into fabric, okay? This is actually how real fabric is made with this over under pattern, all right? And once you get to the point where you're almost out of string, then you're going to be ready to start tying on yarn, which is what's going to make your weaving look really nice. It's going to go much faster. Um, and it's going to add color. So I'm going to pull this through. Now I've gone around about three or four times, and I've only got this much string left. It's not very much. So I'm ready to get some yarn. So I'm going to unroll some yarn, usually about two arms length or one body height is a good amount of yarn to start with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this into my yarn and I'm going to tie it onto the string I've been weaving with. I'm just going to tie a knot, which means I'm going to go crisscross and one around and under the other. And I'm just going to do that twice. And if this is kind of hard, you can have your friend put their finger there to hold it still while you do the second crisscross and under. And then when you pull them both together, it makes a knot. And these little extra strings, these little ends, you can kind of trim off so it's shorter. So now I've just made this string longer by adding yarn to it. And now I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to start where I left off, which was at this edge. I'm going to find the end of my yarn. And now I'm going to start weaving with my yarn. So I'm just going to use the end of the yarn just like I was using the end of the string to keep on going under, over, under, over. Each time I get to the end of 
one side of the cardboard, I pull it all through. Now the first time you pull it all through, you've got this knot where your yarn attaches to your string. You can't just pull till the knot hits a string. You gotta pull it all the way through. Okay, you don't wanna have any loose strings. So I'm gonna flip again. I'm gonna take my yarn under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And now I've used up what was left of that white string. So the yarn is gonna start to become part of my weaving. And that's when it starts to look really cool and when it starts to go really fast. So you just keep on going around just like you did with the string, the same way. You're gonna keep on weaving until you run out of this color yarn. And when you run out of this color yarn, you just go get the same color or a new color and tie more yarn onto the end. And that's how you fill up your weaving with your yarn. So I'm just gonna keep going, pushing my yarn down to the bottom each time. And you can see that it's creating a pattern. You can see that pattern with the string. You can see how the yarn starting to become part of that pattern. You can see from this side it's going under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. So the next time that yarn comes around, it's not going to go under this string again. It's going to go over this string, then under this one. You just keep on doing it. You're going to keep on weaving. You're just going to slowly add more colors and fill it up till you get to the top. When you get to the top, then you'll be ready to take your weaving off and see what you've made. Have fun weaving.